get the book Icons of Evolution if you want a whole lot more on the history of this peppered moth idea. But <clears throat> they tell the kids, we're going to learn to think critically. Boys and girls, do you think humans are still evolving? What kind of question is that? That's one of those questions like, uh, have you stopped beating your wife yet? <laughs> wow, let me think. If I say yes, I'm admitting I did. If I say no, I'm still doing it. Did you know it's possible for the question to already have a built-in assumption? Look at that question. Do you think humans are still evolving? What's the built-in assumption? That humans evolved. Now, how's a Christian kid supposed to answer that for homework for Monday? Hmm. I would say, teacher, this question is poorly written. It assumes evolution has happened when it has not. It's like asking the question, you know, why are elephants orange? Boy, no, there's a tough one. Why are they orange anyway? Uh, they're not orange? Mm -hmm. This is not learning to think critically. This is a Soviet-style indoctrination type brainwashing question. And when the kid gets done taking this class, he's going to think he knows how to think. But he doesn't. He knows how to be told what to believe and he never understands how it happened to him. That's not thinking critically. Then they tell the kids, we've got evidence for evolution from homologous structures. Wow, what's that mean? Yes, boys and girls. Did you know you have two bones in your wrist and they're called the radius and the ulna? Pretty cool. And did you know the alligator has two bones in his forelimb? And look at this. They're called radius and ulna. See that? That proves we are related. That's what they're going to tell them. Homologous structures provide evidence that these animals evolved from a common ancestor. It's found in just about every textbook. You got it in these other ones up here, I'm sure, don't you, Steve? Homologous structures as evidence for evolution. They descended from a common ancestor, textbook says. Think critically. The bones are the same, boys and girls. See, that proves we're related. Evolved from a forelimb of a common ancestor. This textbook says, <clears throat> comparative anatomy provides further evidence of evolution. The commonalities suggest that these and other vertebrate animals are all related. They probably evolved from a common ancestor. This is a lie. They probably have a common designer. Mm -hmm. You know, the different bones in different animals come from different genes on the chromosomes. They're not homologous to begin with, okay? And even if they were, that still wouldn't prove common ancestor. It proves a common designer. The same designer made them all. Did you know the lug nuts from a Pontiac will fit on a Chevy? You can go out in the parking lot and try it. They will. That proves they both evolved from Honda 14 million years ago. <laughs> no, it's true many animals have a similar forelimb structure. That's a good observation. I agree. They say they must have had a common ancestor. Oh, bad conclusion. Then they'll say, this helps prove we all came from a rock. Well, now you really have got a bad conclusion there. Then they tell the kids, we have evidence from development. But 1936, the German Supreme Court said, I mean, the German Supreme Court said Jews are not persons. That opened the way to allow Hitler to kill the Jews. Six million, at least, Jews were killed. I read lots of books about Hitler. I've been to Germany a couple times. Hitler said, I have the right to exterminate an inferior race that breed like the vermin. Hitler thought the Jews were an inferior species. He said, the Germans are the superior race that deserve to rule the world. Hitler was killing the Jews to make more living space. For the Germans. He sought to make the practice of Germany conform to the theory of evolution. Hitler said, if you want these criminals, I'll send them to you on luxury ships. You know, in 1938, the Jews could have been saved, but America refused to take them. Every country but Sweden refused to take the Jews. Hitler's book and his mind was captivated by evolutionary thinking, probably since he was a boy. Evolutionary ideas lie at the basis of all that is worst in Mein Kampf. Hitler thought it was the duty of the strong to trample the weak. In his book, Hitler said, Nature does not desire the mating of weaker with stronger individuals, even less does she desire the blending of a higher with a lower race. Who's a higher race, Adolf? He kept talking about the mingling of Aryan blood all through his book. He talked about Aryan races, lower peoples. Well, I found Hitler's hit list. Hitler thought the blonde-haired, blue-eyed Norwegians were close to pure Aryan. Did you get all that? The blonde-haired, blue-eyed Norwegian. Ja, sure you betcha. Oof, hey there, fella. He thought the Germans were mostly Aryan. The Mediterraneans are slightly Aryan. The Slavics are half Aryan, half ape. 
Orientals are slightly ape, black Africans are mostly ape, and Jews are close to pure ape. Hitler killed the Jews to speed up the evolution process. Let's eliminate the inferiors. Anybody know where the Olympics were held in 1936? Berlin. Anybody know who won the most gold medals? Jesse Owens, the black American athlete. Hitler was so angry, he said, it's not fair to make my men race against this animal. Hitler said, I regard Christianity as the most fatal, seductive lie that ever existed. Well, that's because he thought biological evolution would weed out the religion and be a weapon against religion because the Bible teaches all nations are of one blood. And if you think you are superior to somebody because of the color of your skin, number one, you're wrong. Number two, you're stupid. Okay, number three, you're not right with God. Okay, we cover on the, more on the races, and there's no such thing as races. It's just skin colors on video number seven. I stood in the courtroom in Nuremberg where they held the trial years ago. Those guys on trial said, we did nothing illegal. We were just obeying orders. Yeah, and they were found guilty anyway, weren't they? Because see, there's a higher law than Germany's law. It's called... God's law. Now, the Supreme Court in America in 1973 said the word person does not include the unborn. That's the decision that opened the way now for 45 million babies to be killed in America. A thousand million, that's a billion worldwide. On September 11, 2001, 3,000 Americans were killed by terrorists. We spent billions of dollars trying to hunt them down and kill them, right? You know what else happened September 11, 2001? 4,500 Americans were killed by abortionists. 50% more, and nobody said a word. The next day it happened again. We've had a September 11th tragedy every day ever since. Have we gone nuts? Margaret Sanger started a group called Planned Parenthood to eliminate the inferior species. She wanted to wipe out the blacks, the Jews, and the Orientals. She thought they were human weeds. We could spend all day on Margaret Sanger, but they thought that, just like Hitler said, the Jews are a parasite in the body of nations. Margaret Sanger said the unborn child is a parasite in the woman's body. No, it's a child, okay? It's a baby. We could spend all day on Margaret Sanger. We don't have to take time for that now, but um, this is a Planned Parenthood document from 19... <clears throat> Uh, 1952, they said, your question's answered about birth control. What is birth control? Is it an abortion? They said, oh, definitely not. An abortion requires an operation. It kills the life of a baby after it has begun. Well, you bunch of hypocrites at Planned Parenthood, now they're the biggest funder of abortions in the country. These six things doth the Lord hate. Hands that shed innocent blood. God hates this. Cursed be he that taketh reward to slay an innocent person. And all the people shall say, Amen. Amen. Your textbooks are going to tell you, kids, that you have an appendix that is vestigial. You don't need it anymore. That's a lie. You need your appendix. The appendix is part of your immune system. Here's an article on the web from University of Chicago. Ask a scientist. Nancy writes in and says, What is the function of the appendix in a human before it is taken out through surgery? This lady writes back and says, the appendix has no known function. It, she's way behind the times on that one. She goes on to say, it is believed that the appendix will gradually disappear in human beings as our diet do not include cellulose no more. <laughs> our diet do not include cellulose no more. University of Chicago, wow, good place to get an education. Uh, not in English, apparently, but in the first place, this is not true, okay? The appendix is part of your immune system. 